Sergeant Preston of the Yukon. On King, on you husky. <laughs> gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. Back to the days of the gold rush. And the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon in their relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. The Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the delicious cereals shot from guns, and the Mutual Broadcasting System, presents by special recording, Sergeant Preston of the Yukon. Our adventure will begin in just a moment. What do the initials G-O-C stand for? You'd better know because someday they may save your life. G-O-C stands for the Ground Observer Corps, the vital civilian arm of our nation's air defense system. Day and night, in thousands of observation posts and air defense filter centers, your friends, your neighbors are standing guard, protecting you from a surprise enemy attack that could come at any moment. Our security, our very survival, depends on adequate warning. Our radar network is in constant operation, but only human eyes and ears can fill the gaps in our radar system. Do your part. Serve just a few spare hours a week. One million volunteers are desperately needed. Contact Civil Defense and join the Ground Observer Corps today. You're really needed. This message is brought to you as a public service. At first, Johnny Lake thought it was a storm that had wakened him. But then he realized there was someone knocking on the door of the cabin. In just a second. He rolled out of his blanket, rose to his feet, and hobbled painfully to the door. Will you put me up for the night, mister? Sure. Come on in. Boy, the storm's getting worse. Yeah, you can't see your hand in front of your face. Yeah, there's some wood beside the stove. Want to toss in a few more chunks? Yeah. Yeah, you, uh, you live here? No. I look around, no furniture. Nobody lives here. It's taking shelter from the storm, huh? Yeah. Oh. Oh. What's the matter with your leg? I sprained my ankle this afternoon. My partner went into Selkirk to see if he could hire a dog team and a sled. He was going to come back and pick me up, but then the blizzard started. I don't expect him before morning now. Uh, you heading north? Yeah. Dawson and the Klondike. I'm Johnny Lake. My name's John, too. John Smith. A hardy. You don't have any blankets? No, I expected to make Selkirk tonight myself. Well, I can spare a couple. Mike left me his. Uh, here. Thanks a lot. The stove works well, so we'll not freeze to death. I'll just stretch out over here. Yeah. See you in the morning. Yep. Johnny went to sleep once more, but an hour later he wakened. The man who called himself John Smith was preparing to leave the cabin, and Johnny's knapsack was slung over his shoulder. Hey, where do you think you're going? I'm on my way. Put on that knapsack. Try and make me. I have a gun here that'll make you. I have a gun too, mister. <laughs> The thief fired first, and his bullet plowed a furrow in Johnny's scalp. But Johnny's bullet traveled straight to the heart. The man who called himself John Smith dropped to the floor. Johnny Lake never saw it happen. He had fallen back on his blanket, unconscious. Another hour passed before Nick Garvin and Matt Bagg stopped their team in front of the cabin. Oh, there, ho, ho, you huskies, ho, there, ho. We're in luck. Somebody's inside. Smoke coming from the stovepipe. Yeah, no sense in unharnessing the dogs. They can burrow in the snow right where they are. Come on, let's get inside. Look, the door's open a little. Well, we don't have to bother nothing. Inside. Yeah. The door's stuck. 
Well, of course. Okay. Matt. Mother was holding the door. Man. She did? Yeah. Shot through the heart. Yeah, there's another one over here by the stove. He's been shot, too. Oh, he's alone. Fight ended in a draw. No, this one's still alive. Recognize him? I never saw him before. A youngster. You yeah, know the dead man by the door. Huh? It's Jake Hunter. What? You're right. He killed the man up in Dawson, you know. Yeah, I heard they were looking for him. Now, what's this map shop? There's a name stenciled on it. John Lake. Well, now we have the whole story. Jake tries to steal the young guy's knapsack, and they shoot it out. Only this time it's curtains for Jake instead of the other fellow. Maybe we should bandage up the kid's head. Wait a minute. Let's see what's in the knapsack first. Okay. That's a small poke of gold, about two hundred dollars. Well, we can use it. What's this? Yeah, it looks like a bank book. It is. Northwest Bank in Skagway. Wow. What? The balance is over 25000 He could be worth more to us alive than dead. Let's see what we can do for him. And for ourselves. Johnny couldn't remember where he was. Worse than that, he couldn't seem to remember anything. Oh. A bearded man wearing the rough clothes of a prospector mm-hmm. walked toward him, holding out a cup. Yeah, better take a drink of this. Uh, there was another man standing beside the stove, watching him closely. Who are you? I'm Matt Beggs. Uh, that's Nick Garvin. It's a lucky thing we stopped in here last night. You saved your life, mister. Did you? Don't you remember anything about what happened? No. You call me Johnny. Yes. That's your name, isn't it? I don't know. Huh? Hey, let me handle it. I'll oh. Take care of it. Oh, my head. The head wound. He oh. may have lost his memory. I don't seem to remember anything. Here's a notebook and a pencil. Write your name. My name? Oh, yeah. Johnny. John. What's the rest of it? Right. John Lake. Sure. There you are. Shaky, but the signature's right. Yeah. I'm John Lake. If he's going a blank, I said leave it to me. Johnny, you're in trouble, huh? Oh, what? What sort of trouble? I know something's wrong with my head. You I killed didn't... a man last night. What? Oh, no. He's over there in the corner underneath that blanket. But how? Why? His name's Jake Hunter, a man that's well known in Dawson. He was still alive when we got here, and he told us all about your fight. Fight? Jake wanted to spend the night in this cabin. For some reason or other, you didn't want him to. You pulled a gun on him, and you shot him. He fired back, but you only got a scalp wound out of it. Well, why should I object to his spending the night here? Well, we don't know what your reasons were, but the fact is you've murdered a man. Oh, they will hang. If you're ever caught... Well, I'll have to give myself up. Do you want to hang? No. Then listen. Matt and I need money. We're willing to help you if you'll pay off. Do I have any money? Not much on you. About $200 in this boat. But you have over 25000 on deposit in Skagway. Now I remember. You... You do? Uh, just the name, Skagway. I was there, wasn't I? It's all coming back. I doubt it. Remember anything else, Johnny, about yourself? No, no, just names. The Yukon, Dawson, the Klondike. Well, that's where you are, in the Yukon Territory, oh. on the trails of Dawson and the Klondike. Oh, if my head didn't hurt so I... Johnny, you've got to get out of the Yukon Territory or you'll hang for murder. continue our adventure in just a moment. Listen, all you fellows, girls, mothers, dads, everybody. There's something special for each one of you inside your package of Quaker Oats or Mother's Oats right now. It's a folder that offers you nationally known merchandise at savings up to 40% or more. Just use the little blue stars from Quaker cereal packages. They count like money toward such items for you fellows and girls as a Wilson Fielder's mitt, complete camera outfit, Beautiful Love Me Baby Doll, Roller Skate, Tricycle. One of the items for you dads is a Remington Deluxe Shaver. Regular $29.50 value with 10 blue stars, only $18.83. 
a saving of over $10. And you ladies can save $40 on a 17-jewel Benrus watch. Just buy Quaker Oats or Mother's Oats, either quick or old-fashioned, round or square package. The folder inside gives you full details. Hurry, save up to 40% or more on valuable and useful merchandise. Get Quaker Oats or Mother's Oats today. Now to continue. In Selkirk, Mike Dennis, Johnny's partner, had met Sergeant Preston. And the sergeant had agreed to drive out and pick up Johnny. They left the town as soon as it was light and reached the cabin about 10 o'clock. Pushing! Hey, I see you! Hey, now! wonder what's the matter with the king, sergeant. What's he growling about? Something inside the cabin he doesn't like. Oh, but there's only Johnny. Stand aside while I open the door. I don't see anyone. Johnny? King, who had been working as a loose lead, trotted ahead of his master into the cabin and straight to the corner where the dead man lay covered by a blanket. The sergeant pulled it back. Johnny. This isn't your partner. The man called Jake Hunter. Wanted for murder, dead or alive. He's dead? Yes. The crown's been spared the expense of a trial. But what could have happened here? Where's Johnny? He couldn't have walked far, Sergeant, not on that ankle. We didn't have to sell, Kirk, or we'd have met him on the trail. Could he have shot this man? Seems likely, doesn't it? If he did, it was probably in self-defense. Jake was a cold-blooded killer. Well, there might have been other people who took shelter here last night. Also possible. I'll take a look outside. No will have covered up any tracks. Still, there may be something. Yes, Mike. What? I don't see anything. Close to the cabin here. There's hollows in the snow. Drift? No, they're too regularly spaced. Six of them. Six dogs. Those hollows are where they burrowed in the snow. Then someone with a dog team was here, and Johnny must have left with him. But why would Johnny go anywhere when he knew I'd be coming back here? We'll find that out. We learned what happened last night. How, sir? Find Johnny. Find whoever else was here. Well, there are no tracks. King can pick up the scent of the team from where they burrowed. Follow the dogs, and we'll find the men. Give me a hand with the case. Sure. With any luck, the sergeant and Mike might have caught up with Garvin, Beggs, and Johnny the first day. But they met with many delays. It took them four days to reach Whitehorse. But along the route, they had learned that Johnny was traveling with two men, and they obtained descriptions of them. At Whitehorse, Jake Hunter's body was left at the Northwest Mounted Post, and the sergeant and Mike pushed on to White Pass. There they learned that Johnny, Garvin, and Beggs had crossed the border the previous afternoon. The sergeant asked for permission to continue on into American territory. Of course, sergeant. Even though Hunter was wanted for murder, the details of the shooting must be cleared up. But there's no way that you can force these men that you've been following to answer your questions in Skagway. There's a United States Marshal there now, sir. I'll arrange for them to be sent back if we can find them. But you're not in uniform. No, sir. These clothes are better suited to the trail this time of year. I realize, Sergeant, but I was only thinking of how you'd identify yourself as a marshal. Oh. I'd better give you a letter. Well, that'll be fine, sir. You may start at once. Thank you, Inspector. <laughs> so the Sergeant and Mike headed down the trail to the boom town of Skagway, the port which had become famous all over the world as the gateway to the Yukon. And at the very moment they were crossing the border... Johnny Lake was closing his account in Northwest Bank. Nick Garvin and Matt Beggs escorted him back to his hotel room. Oh. Tired. How about paying off, Johnny? No. What do you mean, no? We've kept our bargain. We've got you here. We want our 10000 You haven't kept your bargain yet. You promised to find passage for me back to the States. Why, you he little... Does it. I have a gun, Matt, and if you try any rough stuff, I'll use it. I'm tired and I'm weak. I still need your help. As soon as you get me on board a ship, I'll pay you off. Uh, sure, that's only reasonable, Johnny. We'll arrange for your passage. You lie down and get some sleep. It's fun. But both the men knew that passage would be difficult to arrange. The Portland Bell had sailed the day before, and an old schooner was the only ship anchored in the harbor. Nick and Matt discussed the situation at one of the waterfront cafes. Why don't we just take the money, all of it? Because even if Johnny has forgotten everything about his past life, he still remembers how to pull a trigger. If he can outshoot Jake Hunter, he's better than you and me. Yeah, we can wait until he's asleep sometime and take the gun away from him. He'll keep his door locked from now on. What about the schooner? Ah, uh, nothing doing. That hulk isn't going anywhere. How do you know? I know the skipper, Captain Wilkes. There he is. Over at the bar. Why do you know him from? First of all, specialty is smuggling. Hey, Matt, he's our man. 
We'll cut him in. Say, he isn't going anywhere. His whole crew jumped ship and took off for the Klondike. You hire another crew if you offered enough money. Matt, we sail with him. Get rid of Johnny somewhere at sea, and the whole 25000 would be ours. No dice. That's a sailing ship. No matter how much money he offered, Wilkes couldn't find a crew to handle a windjammer. Not in this town. Maybe we wouldn't have to sail. Huh? I mean, once we got Johnny aboard, it should be easy to handle him. The three of us, the captain and you and me. Johnny couldn't be watching all of us all the time. And just one blow at the back of the head, and overboard. He's finished. They saw us from the shore. <laughs> at night. We'll take him aboard tonight. Call the captain over. Yeah. Hey, Will. Come over here. As the sergeant presented his letter to the United States Marshal in Skagway, Mike Dennis inquired for Johnny at the Northwest Bank. And he met the sergeant afterwards in the lobby of the mansion house. He drew out every cent of money he had in the bank, sergeant. Over $25,000. That's a great deal of money. Well, we both sold our ranches down Texas before we came up here. Well, it certainly looks as if Johnny's running away. Why? It'd be logical if he thought he'd committed murder. Listen, sergeant, Johnny's quick on the draw, but he'd never draw first. One of the men who was with him may have killed Jake. Johnny may feel that he's involved, but there's no point in guessing. We must find him. Any chance of King picking up the trail of the team? In a town of over 25000 It'd be sheer luck if he did. It's up to us now. At least we know what the men look like. I'll we'll start asking for them here. Nick and Matt and Johnny weren't staying at the mansion house. And there were over a hundred hotels in Skagway at that time. The sergeant and Mike split up and began a systematic search. But they'd find nothing when they met for supper that evening. After they had eaten, they strolled along the waterfront discussing their next move. If there were any steamers from the States tied up here, I'd have contacted them first. What about that ship out in the harbor? Oh, that's Schooner. He's been anchored there for over two weeks. Crew deserted. Gold saving. Someone rowing out to it. Yes. <coughs> what are you getting so excited about, King? <coughs> Parking at the rowboat. The one that's heading for the schooner. <coughs> and sniffing at the dock. Like Panda picked up the scent of the team down here. There's a sailor leaning against that piling up ahead. In this business, it always pays to ask questions. King had a the scent. The scent of the three men the sergeant had been following all the way from Selkirk. And though King had actually been told to follow a dog team, these were men who had been traveling with that team. It was something which should be called to the sergeant's attention. King did his best by growling and barking at the rowboat, which had nearly reached the schooner. Good evening. Huh? Oh, howdy, mate. Do you happen to notice the men in that rowboat? Dingy? Yeah, I noticed them. Well, was one of them a Captain Wilkes and three blokes I never saw before? Friends of the captain's probably. Was one of them tall with yellow hair? Well, they're all wrapped up in parkas. One of them have a bandage on his forehead? Well, come to think about it, yeah. And he walked with a limp? Maybe. I figured he'd had a whole cargo and was listening a little to starboard. Oh, <laughs> You know where we can get a boat around here? I have a motor launch. A rowboat would do this better. Well, I have one. But I advise you to keep away from that schooner. A couple of husky gents like you, you're apt to be shanghaied. And Captain Wilkes is a tough customer. Oh, we'd like to find out just how tough he is. Well, don't say I didn't warn you. My rowboat's tied up at the wharf. Thanks. Come on, Tim. <laughs> We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. Watch the premiere of Sergeant Preston of the Yukon on television tomorrow. Tomorrow is the big night, the premiere of the adventure series you've loved on radio. Starring Sergeant Preston, his big black horse Rex, and his wonder dog Yukon King. They're brand new stories, packed with adventure, mystery, romance, bravery, everything the whole family likes. Now you can actually see Sergeant Preston fighting hand-to-hand -hand with desperados of the Yukon. Actually see his dog, King, leap at gold-hungry killers. You'll see magnificent Yukon scenery unfold before your eyes. Rushing rapids, and later, terrifying avalanches and snow slides. It's something new and different in television. Brought to you on a coast-to-coast -coast network by all the Quaker cereals. Quaker puffed wheat and rice, Quaker oats, mother's oats, muffet shredded wheat, and Quaker Paco 10. Remember, it's tomorrow evening, Thursday, and every Thursday thereafter, the exciting premiere of Sergeant Preston of the Yukon on television. Check your newspaper for the time and the station nearest you. Now to continue. 
City. A great black cloud wiped out the light of the moon as Captain Wilkes tied up to the rope ladder that hung down from the deck of the schooner. Matt climbed it first, followed by Nick, Johnny, and the captain. Johnny wondered at the silence of the ship. The ship seems to be deserted. Well, we don't sail until daybreak, and the crew's enjoying a last night ashore. Your quarters are out, gentlemen. It's understood that I'm to have a cabin of myself. That's right. Here we are, down this companion way. You and Matt go first, Nick. Whatever you say, Johnny. As Johnny started down the companion way, the captain picked up a belaying pin from the deck and brought it down hard on the back of the young Texan's head. Oh, catch him. I've got him. Uh, what did you use, Jeff? Yes. He done for No, but he will be when we hoist him over the side. Get the money belt, Ray. Right. Well, <laughs> take a look, Captain. Good enough. Let's get rid of him. Right. You get his feet now. As Johnny was carried up the companionway and across the deck, the moon broke through the clouds. All right, all together now. Heave over the side. <laughs> Look, small boat rounding the stern. Whoever's in it saw what we did. Couldn't have seen it clear. The story is that he fell overboard. Ahoy there! Man overboard! There's a man jumping into the water after him. What if he finds him? Not a chance. That fool will lose his own life. He, he has him. He's pulling him back to the boat. What do we do now? We'll have him brought aboard. Ahoy there. I'll throw your line. Right under his shoulders and we'll horse him aboard. Right. And you, the one who went after him. You better come aboard, too, and get into some dry clothes. You'll freeze to death. Let's have that line. Here it comes. Johnny was hoisted aboard the schooner. And a few minutes later, the sergeant and Mike climbed the rope ladder. King was left behind in the borrowed rowboat, and he howled at the moon. The sergeant and Mike found Johnny in the captain's cabin, stretched out on the bunk. I've given him some brandy. He'll be all right in a minute. Cut his clothes off, Mike. Yes, sir. Some blankets, Captain. You should be thinking of yourself. I'm all right. The blankets, please. Yes. Here you are. You uh, didn't have a chance to swallow much water. He'll be all right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> He's coming, too. Of course, he'll be perfectly all right in a minute. Just had a little too much to drink and fell overboard. Now, uh, if you two men will come to the galley with me, I'll give you some hot coffee. Yeah, we're staying right here. Johnny. He knows him. I'll say I know him. I'm his partner. Johnny. Uh, Mike, you finally got back. What? From Selkirk. There was a man called John Smith. He tried to steal my knapsack. He shot at me, and I shot at him. I think I killed him. Who are all these people? But don't you know where you are? Well, this isn't this the cabin where you left him? Well, you left the cabin a week ago with these two men. I never saw them before. Sergeant. I'm Major. He blanked out when he was shot and doesn't remember anything that happened since then. Did he call you Sergeant? Yes, I'm Sergeant Preston, Northwest Mounted Police. Well, let me explain about Johnny. The way you said, Sergeant, when we found him, he couldn't remember anything about himself and... We thought he might have friends in Skagway, so we offered to take him. Oh, no, that wasn't the way it was. Now it's all coming back. You told me I'd murdered that man. You said you'd take me to Dawson and get me passage to the States if I paid you $10,000. Johnny, where's the money you drew out of the bank this morning? In my money belt. You aren't wearing a money belt. What? Well, then they've got it. I was starting down the steps, the companionway. The captain was behind me. He hit me. They took your money belt and threw you overboard. I had the belt when I come on board. Yes, Sergeant. Now that you have the whole story, what are you going to do about it? Since you have us covered, there isn't much we can do, but I'd advise you to return Johnny's money. Not a chance. Oh, we decided not to do that. Well, 25000 is quite a haul. Yeah, and it's all right here. I suppose you'll not hesitate to commit murder to keep it. No, Sergeant. And I intend to use bullets this time instead of a bland pin. Oh? That all the evidence you need, Marshal? Okay, what? Marshal Ferguson is standing in the doorway in back of you, uh, Captain. Uh, He's been listening to your plans for the future. Oh, uh, it's the Marshal. Yes, and I have a few plans for the future myself. Drop that gun, Captain. You're under arrest. Yeah, yeah. Drop it around, shoot. Yes, yes, yes. That's better. I've never seen a more welcome sight than you walking into this cabin, Marshal. How'd you happen to come out here? I was making a patrol of the waterfront. I heard the man overboard cry. And your dog started to howl. I decided to investigate. A fisherman brought me out in his motorboat. Well, Marshal, the attempted robbery... Yes, it is right. Give me that money belt. 
Here you are, Johnny. Oh, thanks, Mike. The attempted robbery and the attempted murder were in American territory, Marshal, so these are your business. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'll do my best to stop King Howling. Oh, go right ahead, Sergeant. You got the gun, then, right? King, stop it! I apologize for leaving you down there, boy, but you can see for yourself I'm perfectly safe. Everything's fine, fella. This case is closed. Sergeant Preston will return in just a moment with a word about our next exciting adventure. Your musical treat of the day waits for you throughout the week on Mutual. Each Tuesday and Thursday evening, it's time for Eddie Fisher and a session of music as everyone likes it. Young and old delight in Eddie Fisher's way with a song. And he's joined on every show by Fred Robbins as MC, Alex Stordo's orchestra, and outstanding guest stars. Every Saturday, the teenager's favorite, Johnny Desmond, brings phonorama time and a roundup of the newest and best in popular recordings. On Sundays, the Enchanted Hour presents favorite music from the world's best-loved composers. Every weekday also means time for Hawaii calls and authentic melodies of the islands. Music fills Mutual's air throughout the week. Hear the Eddie Fisher Show, Johnny Desmond with Phonorama Time, Enchanted Hour, and Hawaii Calls on Mutual throughout the week over most of these stations. And now, here is Sergeant Preston. Sergeant Preston reporting for duty, Inspector. Well, Sergeant, a trapper named Sam Baker has located the hideout of fur thieves who have been operating near Big Elk. Well, that's good news, sir. Yes, I want you to go to Big Elk. You'll be able to close in on the thieves and get evidence enough to put them behind bars for a long time. Where is the hideout? Baker will tell you that when you see him. I'll start the big oath at once, sir. Neither the inspector nor Sergeant Preston knows that Baker cannot tell where the stolen furs are hidden. For Baker has been killed. And when King follows the trail of the killers, the mighty dog leads his master into a trap from which there seems to be no escape. Be sure to hear this next exciting adventure. These Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Adventures are brought to you every Monday through Friday at this time by the Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the delicious cereals shot from guns. By special recording in cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System. They are a copyrighted feature of Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Incorporated. Created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, and directed by Fred Flowerday. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice. So long. This is Mutual, radio network for all America. <laughs> <laughs>